abandon all hope, you who enter here. In solemn hues, I beheld these words inscribed upon the summit of a gate, and I, perplexed, turned to my guide. The master, seasoned in experience, explained that this was the place where all suspicions must be abandoned, and cowardice extinguished. We had arrived at the realm where those who forsook intellectual excellence endured their torment. As we ventured into the unknown, the air resounded with sighs, complaints, and lamentations, spoken in languages diverse and horrible dialects. A tumultuous cacophony, akin to the howling wind over shifting sand, filled the air without a star. Overwhelmed, I wept at the haunting sounds. The poet revealed the pitiable fate of those we encountered, the melancholic souls who lived without infamy or praise. These shades, entangled with the caitiff choir of fallen angels, suffered incessantly. Naked and tormented by gadflies and hornets, their faces bled and tears mixed with blood, forming a repulsive pool at their feet. Gazing further, I saw a banner swiftly advancing, followed by a multitude so vast that death's relentless grasp seemed inconceivable. Among them, I recognized the shade of the one who, through cowardice, made the great refusal. These were the wretched sect, hated by both God and his adversaries. These miscreants, never truly alive, endured perpetual stings from tormenting insects. Envious of every other fate, they existed in a realm devoid of hope, forever barred from fame. As we continued, I beheld a riverbank with people yearning to cross. I sought my guide's explanation, and he promised understanding when we reached the gloomy shores of Acheron. A boat approached, navigated by an old man, warning of eternal suffering and urging the living soul among us to withdraw. Refusing to turn away, I received a stern response, assuring that our passage would be determined by a higher will. As we reached the river, a tumultuous quake shook the dismal plain. Karen, the ferryman with fiery eyes, quieted as our journey awaited. The souls, weary and naked, changed color and gnashed their teeth, cursing God, their ancestors, and all existence. Guided by celestial justice, they reluctantly crossed the river, leaving one by one like leaves falling in autumn. On the other side, a new group assembled. The master explained that these were the souls condemned by divine wrath, and celestial justice compelled them to face their fears and turn them into desire. My master's words concluded, and the trembling plain unleashed a blast of wind and a vermilion light that overwhelmed my senses. As the land of tears echoed with a violent quake, I succumbed to an overwhelming sleep, bathed in the recollection of that terrifying encounter.